to the cloud. Okay, should be starting to record now. Okay, someone else is coming in. Um, let's begin with prayer. Um, I do, as I shared earlier, um, I'm so happy to see Kathy Standers here. Um, her uh, daughter Joy texted me right before the meeting began. And um, as some of you know, may know, uh, Father Wayne is in the hospital right now with COVID. Um, and unfortunately, um, he has been there for several days. He's continuing to get better on a five-day IV plan, um, antiviral and steroid meds. Um, unfortunately, Kathy also has tested positive. And so um, Sean and Joy are both quarantining and Nurse Joy is taking good care of them. And she says, we appreciate the continued prayers for healing. They have definitely been working. So let us all continue to hold the Sanders family in prayer um, during this time um, throughout this meeting and now. Let us call the meeting to order. Almighty and ever living God, source of all wisdom and understanding, be present with those who take counsel here today for the renewal and mission of your church. Teach us in all things to seek first your honor and glory Guide us to perceive what is right and grant us both the courage to pursue it and the grace to accomplish it through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All right, um, Trina, where are we with the quorum? 38, I okay. Yeah, I think between who's actually participating and then who wrote their names with an extra person, I've come up with 28. So I think someone has to make a motion to accept that as a quorum. Okay, thank you. Um, is there a motion to accept the current um, number of attendees as our quorum for only this meeting this year? So moved. Thank okay. you. Second. And there's a second? Okay, um, all in favor, please don't you say I because it will sound terrible. You can go into reactions and raise your hand. Yes, if you go into reactions, you can raise your virtual hand or you can, in fact, I'm gonna stop sharing so we can see each other. Okay, so you can raise your virtual hand or your real hand to say I. Okay, opposed. Extensions. Okay, I'm going to say the motion passes and we've got an eye in the chat too. Excellent. Okay, thank you all. Just sharing screen. Approve the minutes of the annual, the 20, oh, that should be 20. Well, that's right. That's right. 2020 annual meeting. Okay. Um, here they are. They were in your um, annual meeting packet. Um, and so hopefully you had a chance to review all that before just now. Is there a motion to accept these minutes? I make a motion to accept. Thank you. Is there a second? I second. Thank you. And once again, we have to, <laughs> um, all in favor, please say aye, raise your virtual or, okay. Okay, hands down. Sorry, you have to unclick your virtual hand so it can go down. Um, all opposed, abstentions. All right, motion passes, thank you. All right, moving right along. Um, we're gonna start with some recognitions. First, we wanna thank and recognize the hard work of two of our um, vestry members who are completing their terms of service and and finishing their work with the vestry, Rob Constantine and Jamie Wood. Thank you both for everything you've given to this church and the leadership you've, you've um, provided. We are so grateful. And both of them should find a um, gift certificate in their email. Ooh. Yes, as a, as a small token of our gratitude, um, there is a, a thank you gift 
Um, I understand there would usually be like flowers and, and something tangible to hand you, but in this virtual <laughs> world, um, it's electronic. So there's an electronic gift for you um, coming your way. We also would like to recognize and thank the staff. Um, I have been so amazed and impressed with the group of people I've been lucky enough to work with um, here at um, St. David's. I obviously um, did not choose them, but mm -hmm. have been so, so thankful to have each one of them, Trina, John, Mark, and Karen. This is truly an incredible group of people that work so hard day in and day out and through incredible circumstances of this past year to serve this community. And um, it's been my pleasure to work with them, but I also know that they deeply love all of you and, and bring their best um, every single day. So thank you, Trina, John Mark and Karen. And each of you will find a gift certificate in your email box as well, as well as you, Pastor Jocelyn and also Father Wayne, just to thank, thank you. Thank you. That's exciting. So yes, virtual gifts once again. Chat. Okay. Um, I was made aware that the rector search committee um, uh, was not acknowledged uh, last year. And um, so <laughs> while I personally think you were an did a great job. <laughs> um, I also want to recognize the members of the search committee uh, on behalf of the entire congregation. Search processes are long and hard, and I have heard um, from multiple sources that this search committee really went above and beyond um, the call, you know, what would normally be expected of a search committee through meeting weekly, through um, prayer and discernment and study. And I know as a candidate, um, I felt so um, shepherded through the process, and it's it's a it's a real gift um, because you know um, applying for jobs and seeking new calls is is stressful and hard. And I know being on the other side of that table and searching for a new um, um, uh, pastor uh, rector is hard as well. And I'm um, you know I think it worked out well, <laughs> and I. Um, and so I want to acknowledge Jamie Wood, the chair, Debbie Park, the secretary, Kathleen Hoot, chaplain, and then the committee, Craig, John, Lynn, Elaine, and Rob. Um, I'm grateful to y'all, and I know St. David's is grateful as well. So thank you all. There's a little hand clapping um, reaction to you if you wanna click that. Thank you. Um, we also this year want to acknowledge the stewardship committee. Um, I have had so much fun working with this group of people. Um, I come from um, a lifetime of stewardship, really. My dad was the stewardship chair uh, for a lot of my uh, childhood. And so this, this is just a part of, of life for me. And, and I know the time and energy that goes into the stewardship campaign. And this year, we had to really throw out the rule book and, and start from scratch um, and think about how to do stewardship under the, the current circumstances. So Chris, Roseanne, and Shirley just um, really stepped up to the present challenge, brought their hearts and their, their creative minds. And um, alongside Nancy and Anne and Rob, we all really put our heads together and made our goal, which is incredible in a pandemic. And we have new pledgers in a pandemic, which is, um, is, is truly extraordinary. So I'm so impressed and so grateful to this group. And um, on behalf of the entire St. David's community, um, thank all of you for your hard work and your efforts. And now um, I, we have a ministry award, the 2020 Copeland Award to share. Um, this is an award given for exemplary ministry um, at St. David's. And um, I was, um, I was uh, shocked to learn that it's my choice um, and then uh, felt overwhelmed because 
the in some ways I feel like the entire congregation deserves this award for exemplary ministry in the past year. Um, this whole community has just come together and um, and just done incredible things in extraordinary circumstances. However, two people really um, have stuck out this um, through through it all. And so um, I would like to give this award this year to our treasurer, Jane Kikorian. Um, she truly um, has gone above and beyond and uh, poured hours and hours into figuring out how to keep this congregation um, financially solvent. And I think um, we are in the position that we are in and looking at the future that we are looking at because um, of Jane's foresight and ingenuity and just dedication. So thank you and congratulations, Jane. And then I am so, uh, have been so honored to work alongside one of the best senior wardens I think the Episcopal Church has ever seen, uh, Ann, Ward Ann Kellett. Um, I know she has uh, stepped into this role uh, through lots of challenges in the last couple of years and stayed on, not, not expecting there to be a pandemic, but just expecting there to be a leadership transition. And she, um, she continued in this role and, um, and just has been such a stabilizing and, um, and strong leader, the leader that we all needed during this time. So I'm grateful to her and I know the entire community is as well. So congratulations, um, Anne and Jane, and thank you for your dedication and ministry to the entire St. David's community. Ooh, oh my goodness, okay. And now we are at an exciting moment in our life together um, where we are going to vote and um, as I shared in the um, in the email, um, every screen gets one vote. So if you want to have your own vote, you have to log in as your own account. Um, but if not, it's fine. Um, are there any? We're going to start with um, the vestry candidates. Um, are there any nominations from the floor? Um, are the nominations um, that have already been submitted are um, Gail Decker for a two-year term and then Vicki Greco, Laurel Priest, and Joy Wolf for three-year terms. Are there any nominations from the floor? Okay. Um, are you willing to vote for the slate in its entirety together? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Um, here comes a poll. Um, it's going to pop up on your screen and get, just ask if you elect the slate, yes or no, or abstain. And um, oh my gosh, here we are with the technical difficulty. I have the poll all set up and it says my polling session is inactive. Oh, okay. Um, interesting. And if you click polling, does it come up for you? No, it comes up as a um, the same thing. I'm logged in from another device, which I'm not, but. <laughs> huh. Oh, friends, wave. I'm sorry. We can wave. We can raise our hands. Well, see, this is the best laid plans because I have it all set up. <laughs> in Zoom and it was gonna pop up on your screen and you're gonna click the button and it's gonna be so easy. And um, it's not gonna work. Um, I, I think someone else is logged in on the St. David's account maybe. Yeah, two other people. Okay, so you if one of you click um, the polling button, does it work for either of you? No, Debbie is the only other one. Oh, Debbie. I don't know how I am still on that, but where would I click? Where would I find a? Oh, I see one. Polls. If I click this polling button, 
Yeah. Yeah. Does anything happen? Oh, wait a minute. I think I can do it. Oh, awesome. Okay. Ooh, can you, you push um, the, the vestry election? That, that's, it says, do you wish to elect the slate of vestry candidates? Yep. That's the one we want. Yep. Okay. But how do I make it? Is anybody seeing it? Just, no, not yeah. yet. Click it. Yeah, I can see it. Oh, good. It says attendees are now viewing. Okay. And it please vote. Away. I'm not. It went away. I just submitted my vote. Okay. I didn't see it. Yeah. It went away. Wait, we submitted ours. Keep waiting. Excellent. Okay, good. It says 20, 24, 25. People are voting. Excellent. We're Keep there. voting. We're getting there. Okay. Oh, uh, wait a minute. I don't. I don't know how I get to vote. You oh, don't. You don't. <laughs> Those of us that are logged in as Davis will not get to okay, vote. Okay, hang on. It says 28 of 33. Um, has everybody had a chance that thinks they can? I think it went away before I could touch it. Oh. <clears throat> I, uh, I don't know if there's anything else I can do. We can okay. raise our hands. Let's just raise. It should it. give you. A, I vote. I vote yes. I vote okay. yes. Okay, hold on. I vote um, yes. Debbie, can you just push? It should say show results. Um, I have a end polling, but yep, do that. Push that. Oh, okay, I'll do that. Share results. Share results. Share results. Show us the results. Yes, please. Okay, here it comes. Can you see it? Yes. Yes. All right. Okay. And I vote yes. Okay. Excellent. I'm I'm going to presume they were elected. Congratulations and thank you for your um, your commitment and service to the church Good. this year. All right. <laughs> <laughs> let us return. Oops. Let us return to the share the agenda. Um, <clears throat> all right, we need to elect representative for our preschool advisory council and we have a nominee, Marsha Wing. Are there any other nominees from the floor? Okay, then Debbie, I will need you to work your magic again and put the poll up for um, the preschool pack. You're muted, Debbie, so we can't hear you. I just found what to do. I'm gonna okay. launch, I'm gonna launch the polling. It says, do you wish to elect the following person to a two-year term on the preschool pack? Correct. So wing. Shall I launch it? Please. Here it goes. Okay, keep watching for it to pop up. Uh, I think I think maybe that's the, has everybody had a chance? Okay, go okay. ahead and show us the results. So. Okay, here we go. Share results. Okay. All right. I presume she was elected. So thank you, Marsha, for thank agreeing you. to serve on the preschool pack. Thank you. Pretty thank fancy, you. John Sol Jocelyn. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here we go. I'm gonna one more. We've got one more election, and that's um, for a convention delegate for 2022. Those people will serve as alternates for 2021. Our delegates for this year, so the ones who were alternates last year and who will serve um, as convention delegates this year, are Kathy Winder and Bill Blakesley. So um, I will entertain motions from the floor, nominations from the floor. I have a question. Yes, Kathleen. Um, so the only reason that the alternates would need to attend is if the delegate cannot make it. Is that correct? 
That is correct, yes. However, we include- They can attend. Yeah, we encourage the alternates to attend, even if they, especially if they've never been a delegate before, right. so they exactly. see how it works. Yeah. yeah. And as much as we, they are hoping it will be an in-person convention this fall, um, that may not be possible once again. So it might when is be it a, in the fall. It's November. in November. November. Yes, I don't have the. Where will it be date. held at if it's held? I don't remember. Saint Bartholomew, the Poway. Oh, thank you, Bill. Saint Bart's in Poway. I will um, nominate myself as an alternate. Thank you, Kathleen. Is there another nominee? Well, I wouldn't I mind doing because it. I'd be staying home <laughs> if she's gone. I'm here. <laughs> I would love to do it. I enjoyed it the last time. If if any, okay. if, unless there's someone else that wants to. Thank you, Anne. So we have Kathleen Hoot and Anne Kellett, um, nominees from the floor. Are there any other nominations? Okay, Debbie, can you please put up the last poll? Um, for convention delegates, their names will not appear. They'll, it just says, would you like to elect the nominations from the floor? Um, please go ahead and cast your vote when it comes up. Wait, I gotta find this next one. I think okay. it says relaunch poll. Oops, wait a minute. I don't know how to, the last time, oh, I know, wait a minute. I know what I need to do. Hang on, hang on. Okay, no worries, here no we worries. go. Oh, here it comes. Okay, I'm gonna launch it. You know who you're voting for? It just Kathleen and Ann. Okay, it says, do you wish to elect the nominees from the floor to serve as alternates? Kathleen yes. and Ann, here it goes. It's on its way. Okay, please vote. And I need to find how, how to get myself off of this. <laughs> it's, and I don't know what- It's do. okay, Debbie. No, no one knew it would work out this way. So we've learned something new. And when you're ready, go ahead and share the results. Oh, you muted. Okay, here we go. Uh, share results coming up. Okay, it's uh, 31 or 100%. 100%, <laughs> excellent. Okay. Congratulations and thank you, Anne and Kathleen. Thank you to everyone who stepped forward to um, take on these leadership positions. Congratulations and thank you for your service to St. David's. All right. Um, now we have a presentation of the 2021 budget from our um, treasurer and Copeland Award winner, Jane Kikorian. Take it away. Well, on that note, first I'll say thank you very much. That was a complete surprise. Um, I'm happy to share it with Anne. Um, and I felt a little smile from my dad up in heaven. So thank you very much. Um, on a personal note, just because everybody's here, I was able to get my mom her first um, vaccination shot on Friday down at Petco Park. And, and then we have her second one set up for Feb February 20th. So that's big news for our family. Um, the kids have not seen her in a year. They have sat outside on the porch to visit with her while she sits on her stairs. And so the day that we can all be together again is just gonna be amazing. Um, so, and thank you for everybody's support. Um, okay, so on to the presentation. This is going to be just a high level view. Um, we've got about eight substantive slides to go through. Um, in, in, in your annual report is going to be more details. So um, take it away, who's ever in charge, <laughs> to the next slide. And just go through, we're going to go through a couple of accomplishments, hard to recall, but we did hire a full time rector this year. Um, went straight to that online worship and programs. And here we are again. And um, I just think it's going out, going on so well. And I enjoy worshiping with my mom so much that we've started to talk about, you know, when we are able to regather, can we keep streaming live so that people like my mom can um, still sit and enjoy the services? Um, reopen the preschool, um, you know, what a, 
roughier that was. Um, and I think Karen's after me, so she'll talk more about that. I think there's one more, maybe year end break even. Amazing. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, back to the slideshow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next slide. Okay, so just some comparisons. If you recall, the end of 2019, yeah, um, we ended with a positive amount of money. That was kind of expected. Father Michael left in the November. We didn't have his pay in December. We didn't pay have healthcare costs for him. Um, so that's, that was expected and that was good. Um, and then uh, if you look through, we should see, I think comparisons to 2020. Yeah, this is church only. Um, so again, the amazing uh, figure down there at the bottom uh, right hand of your screen, almost $10,000 positive for the church. Now you're going to see when we start to work in the preschool numbers um, that, that it gets a little wonky, a little scary. So, um, but good news in the end. So we'll keep going, clicking through these screens. Preschool only. That was 2019, lost a little bit of money. Um, now we'll go to 2020. There's that big scary number that we've looked at before. Um, if you recall, when the preschool was closed mid-March, we were continuing to pay some of the teachers, a, little, a couple of payrolls. Um, expenses in April and May were attributed to the preschool, even though it was closed and not bringing in money. And through June, we opened it July 6. But we have that magical number, the Paycheck Protection Plan money that we got May 4th. And so when we go to the next slide, we'll see what happens. Okay, 2019, um, positive number on the left, that 39,000 for the church and the preschool. Now we're looking at the big uh, 109,000 red number at the bottom of the right hand of that slide. Um, so again, looks kind of scary, but I think if we go to the next slide, we're gonna see what happens when we add in that paycheck protection money. So we ended the year with just a small negative figure because when we add in that 108,000, um, it just offset the losses. So that was a very positive way to get through 2020. And those of you who have been following and coming to the town halls know that, you know, we didn't know in June what was gonna happen. And here we are six, seven months later. So I think we can move on to the next slide. Okay, so this is kind of my favorite um, <laughs> slide because it, it kind of shows you where we have come over the past seven years, eight years that I've been treasurer. Um, so when, this is our actual cash balance in the bank. So this is kind of what we end up with at the end of the year. Um, we can go into the next year with sort of a, a, a healthy amount in the bank. So you can see, you know, December uh, 13 and 15, we, we didn't have a lot of money in the bank, but we started to make some decisions that enabled us to start to, to, to kind of save up some money. Um, and we always wanted to have about three months payroll in the bank. Payroll each month is 30 plus thousand. Um, so what we were able to end 2020 is almost the same amount that we ended 2019. So that's pretty amazing. Now, when you see the steep kind of incline when we started to save money, if you think back in um, 2017, we sold the T-Mobile income. Um, I think it was like for $465,000. That was a lump sum payment and we paid off our mortgage. Um, and then in 2018, and Anne mentioned this in her senior warden's report, we, we started to rent out the rectory. Also in 2018, we started to get another cell tower income stream, the Verizon income stream. So you started to see, you can see there that we started to kind of save up some money. So um, we probably won't be able to save up that much money going forward. Um, we've got a full-time rector, which you'll see in the next budget slide kind of ups our expenses, but you know, we're just hoping to just uh, maintain a surplus and, and do the best we can. So that's that. And our next slide. Okay. So let me just take a, a a couple minutes here on this slide with everybody. So on the left-hand side, you're gonna see the actuals. This is where we actually ended up in 2020. You sort of already saw that bottom figure, the almost $10,000 surplus that we ended with. Um, a couple of things I do want to bring to people's attention with the 
right hand side of your screen that has the church budget for 2021. If you see on the left hand side the highlighted pledges, that's your actual figure. So we ended up. You're frozen, Jane. We seem to have lost Jane. Um. Oh, and she's gone now. Okay. Um, we will. I wait. can probably, well, unless she comes back. Or do you want to, yeah, do you want to keep talking? Yeah, I think what she'd want to say is that um, if you notice on the left hand side where we have all other income, um, part of that was $28,000 from flood insurance. Um, she always budgets this very low, very conservatively, because this is money that comes in with plate or other gifts or other income, not rental income. So this is very conservatively low. We've always done better than that, but um, oops. Jane's on the phone with me. Hold on. I was trying to attempt. Do you want to do it by speaker? Yeah, it's, I, I guess I got, uh, it's telling me I don't have internet at home, so I do not know what happened, but I can just wrap it up. Okay. Um, can you hear her, everybody? Hello? Uh, Very low volume on oh, her. Oh, wait a minute. Let me do it this way. Hold on. I was, I had my headphones. Yeah, let me um better again here. Yes. Um, okay, can and can people hear me? I'll just wrap this up. Uh, I can do it pretty quickly. Um, and everybody can hear me. Hopefully. Yes. yes go ahead. Yes. Okay. Okay. So uh, I remember. I recall. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I can't see the budget. But um, all I wanted to say is that um, you can see the all other income category is quite down, <laughs> and. Um, it's high in tw at the end of 2020 because we got almost, we got like about 25000 or 28000 from insurance money after the flood, and we were open at the beginning of the year. So that made that all other income ca category in 2020 a, a little higher than normal. But because we're closed, we've had to really uh, lower that um, amount of other income. So... Uh, and then the other highlighted category uh, is the admin and salaries. And you're going to see from 2020 to 2021, it's quite higher. And again, we've hired a full-time rector with health care costs and, and pension costs. And that's, that's, that's the plan. That's what we wanted to do. And then you're also going to see on the left-hand side, if you drop down to buildings and property, a very high figure. Um, a lot of some of that was the flood money, uh, the insurance money for after the flood, and then all those investments we made because we have the paycheck protection money. We were able to invest in the preschool playground, the preschool floors. Um, we got some uh, the the locks. We trimmed some trees. Uh, in the junior warden's report, she goes through a lot of what we did, and so you see a very high number there. That also drops down in 2021. So that's the highlights of the budget. Um, and I'll, I'll see if I can get back in here, Anne, but I'll, I'll keep talking. It's all right. Um, and, and I think if we go to the next slide, it's kind of looking ahead. Yep. Yeah, okay. I'm trying to get back in here. <laughs> um, so looking ahead, we do get to look forward to our Reverend Dr. Pastor <laughs> Jocelyn Hughes, or Reverend Dr. Jocelyn Hughes, and she, she wanted to take out the doctor part, and I said, no, yes, it's upcoming. I'm here again, you guys. All right, I'll let you in. Yeah. All right. I don't want anyone to jinx it, because I still have a lot of work to do, but yeah. <laughs> God willing, I will Anyone? be the doctor. All right, I'm, a I'm back. Hey. 
you hear me? Okay, so that worked out fine. Anyway, so um, yeah, but we're so excited to, you know, for, for 2021, to hopefully work out to bring this amazing uh, Pastor Jocelyn Hughes and her family here. And and just so you know, the doctor part of that title is going to be, um, let me get this right, a doctor in and church leadership and community engagement. So I, I experience a uh, pastor to come leave that finishes up in April. Um, if, yeah. um, and then you see our projected income through the Jane, if you just do audio, it might be better. Just do audio. And continue with some campus projects. So, so I have a question. Um, so do the campus projects and upgrades um, include everything that uh, was recommended when we had the property evaluation? I don't think it's everything. We're going to take it at step by step. Um, and um, we have but to we're read. Working. Yes, we're working. We're working that. towards yeah. that. Yes. So, Kathleen, we addressed the items that were on the first scale to get done. So we went through and addressed the things that were in the short term, and then we've been moving through the other ones that they said we had a longer timeline to accomplish. Thank we need you. to make sure we have the funding for it. Thank you for that. I only have the screen up that says looking ahead. Is there a different one up for other people? No, nope. that's it. Okay. Is in the budget the food bank? It's not a budgeted item. All right. Technical difficulties aside, thank you, Jane, for this update on the budget um, and where we stand financially. Um, our next presentation will be from Karen Garcia, our preschool director. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I was told to make our presentation sweet and brief, and I will do my best to do that. But I did want to point out some very um, interesting information that I've learned over the last year. I think many of us already know that preschool in general builds for the future. We support the developmental needs of young children, prepare children for elementary school. We lower risk factors such as incarceration, low education levels and poverty. And we here at St. David's have the opportunity to share the word and love of Christ, not only with the children, but also with the staff, their families and the families of the children. Um, and that's our primary mission, of course. But also I want to point out that preschool contributes to the community now. We are a part of the economy and the community. And I think more than ever, we have recognized that the early childhood field does that. Um, we've recognized that more over this last year. We have eight to 10 teachers and support staff who are employed. We support 82 people in the ability to go to work or continue their education. Um, we provide spillover employment, such as housekeeping, landscaping, and other services. Also, the goods and services that we purchase as a preschool help to build the, the local economy. And one very interesting fact that land values increase in the area and the community surrounding a quality preschool. And we have learned more than ever that preschools and childcare is essential. So we can look at our fiscal deficits if we ever have any, both as the church and the preschool together that we are impacting the community in a positive way with those small deficits that we carry both now and of course for the future. Next slide. I 
I also want to point out that we still learn through play. These are children planning their Halloween costumes and playing out on the playground and socializing in our uh, housekeeping area. We still celebrate a little bit differently, a little bit socially distanced but we still celebrate together to create sense of community and to recognize um, all the things that are happening around us in our community and in our world. And we learn new skills. The teachers learned a lot about Zooming this year. <laughs> um, while we were closed during the pandemic, quite a few teachers express the desire to keep connected with the children and with the parents. And we did Zoom with um, art programs, various classes, multiple classes together. We did Zoom with the preschool chapel, Father Sanders, Joy, Debbie, Janet, and Bob. We all worked together to make preschool happen, our preschool chapel still happen. And then just the children, since we've been back in person, we've been learning a lot, learning through the internet, both in person and at home, learning new games, learning how technology works. Currently, we're also teaching the children about hygiene and wearing masks and washing their hands properly. I wanna point out our current and future operations. Currently, we're being cautiously optimistic. We still have three learning groups. I envision growing to our fourth learning group this spring. We do have quite a waiting list, both of younger siblings and other children in the community who are waiting to onboard with us. We are currently serving 41 children with an average daily attendance of 28 to 35 children and hope to grow to a daily attendance of 48 over the course of the spring. We have been having preschool chapel with Pastor Jocelyn on Wednesdays and via Zoom, and that has been going very well. The children are starting to connect, and I want to continue to thank Debbie and Father Sanders and Joy uh, and John Mark for their singing and their stories that we've been incorporating into the chapel Zoom time. And of course, we know that the Paycheck Protection Program helped the preschool as well as the church to reopen and covered a large amount of the deficit for 2020. And Basically, we have learned and continue to learn the lesson of the mustard seed and, and know that we will continue to be a great place to grow. Any Wonderful. people have questions about the preschool program, feel free to email me or text me separately or um, discuss in the chat room later. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Karen, for all of your hard work and the, all of the energy and effort your staff have put in all year long to um, bring the preschool program back and, and make it safe um, for all the children and the, the staff. We're so grateful. All right, and now we are going to hear from um, Elaine Turnbull about St. David's Children and Youth Ministry. Good morning, everyone. I don't have a lot of pictures to share because we have been zooming. This is one picture that I did take. This is the Advent Bear sitting in front of the Advent wreath. <clears throat> and this is just an example of one of the craft items that we did with Sunday school. So our children each made an Advent wreath like this and each week we added a candle <clears throat> and the little flames popped up so we would light them that way each week. Um, we've had several projects like this. I wish I had more pictures, but if you've been attending online services, you've seen our children. We've tried to include them um, in different ceremonies and things, not to mention our youth and children that read through services. And it's really special. We actually have seven kids that participate in Sunday school. We have four youth. Um, Sunday school is always on Sunday morning from 10 to 10.30. Our youth program, what we did this year is we joined Christ Church Coronado and St. Paul's Cathedral and um, just have a set meeting time. We meet on 
Tuesday evening from 6.30 to 7.30. And it's been wonderful because our kids have been able to interact with others <clears throat> here in San Diego, especially our two that are up in Sacramento. They've been very good about participating. And um, it's an opportunity for them to meet people. So when they actually get here to San Diego, they will actually be familiar with some of the kids that they've been Zooming with. And the other thing I want to mention quickly is we also participate in the diocesan youth collaborative. And so when they have activities and programs and things, kids are invited to um, join on those. Again, due to COVID, it's been very limited to have any type of gatherings, <clears throat> but they do do projects. And in December, it was kind of fun. We had one week we did um, cahoots on online with each other. And um, <clears throat> David Hughes won a $10 Taco Bell gift certificate, being a champion in that game. And um, <clears throat> I hope you all saw the Christmas Eve program. What was and it was actually Mother Jocelyn who came up with the idea, but you saw the children, it looked like they were passing a lit candle to each other <clears throat> during the playing of Silent Night. And that was very special and very beautiful. So anyway, I'm um, Leslie Cohen, Francis Warren and I have had a tremendous year of learning how to Zoom and do things online. <laughs> and it's been fun and I just really appreciate it. But I also want to thank and share my appreciation with parents who have to take the time to get the kids on Zoom every Sunday and also help us get these craft projects put together. Um, we do either mail them or deliver them to the door so that the kids can participate. Anyway, it's been an interesting year and but it's been fun and we've all enjoyed it so thank you for the continued support okay thank you so much elaine this is a group of people that have been so adaptable and so flexible and creative and you know just really jumped in and said how can we provide ministry and formation for our children and youth under these circumstances. And um, I'm, as a parent, I'm so grateful. And as a priest, I'm so grateful. So thank you to all of you for that. All right, our next presentation is mine. Yay. Yay. Okay. Oh, friends, this has just been a year. Um, there's no two ways about it. It's been hard. Um, I don't think any of us will miss 2020. I know um, it was a momentous year for, for me and my family that we made the courageous um, and exciting decision to join you in San Diego. We made these wonderful plans to, to sell our home here and move and start a new life in San Diego. And it all crumbled <laughs> along with so many other people's plans and hopes and dreams for 2020. Um, but this community rallied and you came together and you learned new things and you tried new things. And here we are um, almost a year later, it's amazing. Um, and a, testi a testimony to, um, to y'all and, and how important St. David's is to you and how much um, we all want to continue to love and serve God together. Um, we will get back to church. We will, it will happen um, right now. The experts are saying probably late 2021 or early 2022. That feels like forever, I know, but, um, but we will get there. Um, things look good for the church right now. I'm so full of hope. Um, their stewardship campaign was awesome. And our budget projects that my family will be able to relocate this summer. Um, I want to, I want to like race forward and start making plans and, and like, you know, make this happen really quickly. There's still things that are up in the air, still things we need to keep our eye on with the pandemic and the budget. Um, and I last year just taught me <laughs> to be careful with those plans. And so um, in order to not um, get anyone's hopes up or, or anything like that, we're, you know, 
please know the plan is there and we're all hoping and praying and working towards it, but also staying flexible in case we need to continue to adjust and continue to um, figure out what needs to be done in the moment. So all of our ministries are starting to look towards what will post pandemic life be? What will our ministry be? What will, what will our world look like? There's a lot of, of unanswered questions around that. Um, we don't know exactly when it will be here, but it will be here. So as we start to, to look towards that time, we still need to live in the now and, and be doing what we need to do in the here and now for one another, for our community, um, for the world. So I'm so excited about this new vestry that's coming on board. I'm thrilled to share that um, Joy Wolf has agreed to be senior warden. Um, and so she'll be stepping into the role. Um, and I'm, I'm just so looking forward to working with her um, as we, again, continue through this pandemic world, but also start to look forward to what life can be once we um, all get our vaccines and can come back together again. In terms of looking at new programs, I'm excited to share that we are planning to launch a Sacred Ground Circle. Sacred, Sacred Ground is a film and readings-based dialogue series on race grounded in faith. Um, small groups are invited to walk through chapters of America's history of race and racism um, while weaving in threads of family story and economic class and political and regional identity. The 10 part series um, of Sacred Ground is built around a powerful online curriculum of documentary films and readings that focus on indigenous, black, Latino, and Asian Pacific American histories as they intersect with European American histories. Um, it's part of the Building Beloved Community Initiative um, and the Episcopal Church, Church's long-term commitment to racial he healing, reconciliation, and justice in our personal lives, our ministries and society. The series is open to all and especially designed to help white people talk with other white people. Participants are invited to peel away the layers that have contributed to the challenges and divides of the present day, all the while grounded in our call to faith, hope, and love. Um, I cannot tell you the stories I've heard of transformation, the way that this program has um, impacted not only individuals, but the entire church community that have undertaken it. And I'm so excited to, to launch this here. We've talked about it for months now, and I, I think the time is right. Um, I was going to show you a video from the Episcopal Church's website of presiding Bishop Michael Curry talking about Sacred Ground, but we are running behind uh, due to starting a little late and the um, technical difficulties you've had. So I'm not gonna play the video for you. I can link to it in an email and I'll encourage you to watch it on your own. It's great as an introduction to the program. Um, but just to share how it will work, we're looking for five to eight participants for this first circle. We need at least five to run the program. So if we, um, uh, we need five people minimum to sign up um, and eight people maximum. Um, Debbie Park and I will co-facilitate it. Debbie has completed Sacred Ground as well as the Turnbulls. Um, so we've got some great testimonials within our own congregation of the power of this program. Um, and Debbie and I will be co-leading this, co-facilitating this first um, circle. We envision one hour sessions on Sundays from 1130 to 1230. So part of our coffee hour time um, will be spent beginning um, our conversation for Sacred Ground. So, you know, when we all go into breakout rooms, um, a breakout room will be dedicated to the Sacred Ground Circle. Um, and uh, we're looking at approximately 30 weeks. So it can be done in 10 sessions, but those 10 sessions would be about three hours long. Um, so Debbie recommends spreading it out. Um, and we can talk about that as a group, whether that's how we want to do it or if we want to um, do it in 10 weeks. But right now we're looking at a 30-week uh, uh, journey. We will begin on February 7th, so two weeks from today. There are reading assignments and videos to watch. 
And um, I hope that we can launch another sacred ground circle after Easter. So if you're, if you can't do it now, don't fret. Um, we hope that there will be another circle later and we'll just keep starting new circles as people are ready to take this um, journey. Um, so here's what we need you to do. Ask Debbie or I questions as well as Steve and Elaine Turnbull. Um, they are um, well versed in, in the program and, and can share their experience with you. There's a movie called American Creed, which is the very first thing that the Sacred Ground group does um, is watch it together. Um, Debbie recommends that everyone watch it. Like as you're praying and discerning, if you want to try to do Sacred Ground, go ahead and watch the movie. It's free. You can Google it. I'll send you the link um, in the, uh, the Weekly Times. Um, you can watch it on your own. And if it speaks to you and, and you feel like this is a conversation that you're ready to have, then sign up. Sign up to be part of one of, be part of our first Sacred Ground Circle. In addition to Sacred Ground, more good things are coming in 2021, my friends. Uh, we will be having a Lenten Wednesday night program, yay, um, with formation and prayer. We cannot do a soup supper, I'm so sorry, but we can do these other pieces and come together for about an hour on the Wednesday nights in Lent. Um, more information about that will be coming. Um, our opportunities for midweek worship and Sundays will continue um, online until we can come back together in person. Um, we're we have launched a task force, which is going to um, share next, and I'll let them say more about their work together. But um, this task force that's reviewing our ministries and our operations is going to be so crucial for as we look towards moving into our post-pandemic world and life together. And yeah, and then we get to really do that, to look and plan and think and pray and discern about what St. David's will do um, as we move into whatever that new era will look like. Um, I'm excited and blessed to be your rector. I hope you'll read the report that I submitted in the annual report um, where I kind of walk through what we did together in 2020. It's amazing. And um, I'm so proud of this community and, and just we're all very much looking forward to getting there and being with you physically <laughs> as well as we have been virtually. So now I would like to invite our task force um, to uh, share about their work and um, get us ready for some breakout discussion. Thank you, Jocelyn. Do you have the our slides ready there? Perfect, thank you. Um, this is just the title slide. Do you recognize where we would all like to be? Uh, the task force. <laughs> the task force was charged with reviewing the church's ministries, assess where we stand, uh, identify things that are challenging, and report back to the vestry by March first. Hmm. Ah, that's pretty quick. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, next slide, please. Uh, so reimagining our ministry, where are we going to be, where would we like to be, and what opportunities are out there? I, I was reminded as I was listening to the service this morning from uh, the, the letter of St. Paul, which said, for the present form of this world is passing away, and that's where we are right now, is that when we come back, it's not going to be the same, and what do we want that to be? Uh, we have new leadership, new uh pastor, new uh, senior warden, uh, new vestry members, new leadership. Uh, we have our membership is going to look different. Unfortunately, we have members who will not be with us. Uh, and we have new members. And, uh, you know, I, we have we have changes in the neighborhood. The neighborhood is getting younger. The neighborhood is going to have construction projects in, in several places near St. David's. And, and that's an opportunity for us. Uh, I don't know how many times I'm over at the church and repairing something perhaps, 
and there are children playing in the parking lot. There are families walking through the courtyard because they, that's what they do all the time. And, and what can we offer those people? And we have cultural transitions where people, it's, it's not really part of the culture anymore that they go to church on Sunday morning. And how are we going to respond to that? And yet what stays the same is that people have a desire to have faith, to have God in their lives, to see optimism, to see love. And how will we respond to that need that people still have and have always had? Go ahead, Jean, and, and, and take the next slide. All right. Well, as Deacon Nancy and David and I have met with members of the staff and the vestry and some ministry leaders, it has really highlighted for us again all the many gifts and strengths that St. David's has. And we've heard a lot about some of these things this year, but especially the strong leadership. 2020 came with unprecedented challenges for them. And uh, the first was strengthening when and how we communicate as a parish, and then establishing an alternative way to worship together with music and prayer. Um, the pace of making decisions about operations was just accelerated to follow COVID guidelines for safety while trying to adhere to our missional vision and monitoring uh, budget resources so we could sustain operations, investing where necessary for buildings and grounds improvements and assisting the uh, uh, preschool to reopen. All of these things being carried out with uh, Pastor Jocelyn working tirelessly for us long distance. <laughs> And our devoted members, our parish members stepped up almost immediately. I was amazed to see people helping, not only just watching online, but participating and putting the worship service together and learning the new technology to make that happen. And others found new ways to carry out Sunday school for the children as Elaine has shared with us. And others formed a calling tree to check on others. Some members, uh, worked for forming a new small worship groups for those that were interested. And our members never, never showed an, an, a, a tirelessly the, the ways to sustain our formation as a community. And the preschool, the preschool is just blossoming and doing well and that's such a ministry to the community. You know, we're providing quality care in a Christian environment that's an important ministry to the young families in our community. We're sharing God's love and relationships that we build with the children and, and their parents. And some of these families have really experienced many hardships during this time. And they need our prayers and support more than ever. And we've already heard a lot about the stewardship committee in a time when I'm guessing that some churches have, have lost some income and pledges. Um, our stewardship committee with their prayerfully thought out meditations and witness talks reminded us and led us back to remember why we were here. Thank you for doing that. We have so many dedicated program and ministry leaders. And while we weren't able to continually um, keep up all of the things that we normally would carry out, many have continued online or in person as it is safe to do. And we thank each of you that have made that possible. And while people and our members are the most important asset of St. David's community, we're fortunate to have our great property and the buildings and grounds available. And we've heard many ideas in sharing and talking to people um, how we might use these more efficiently. And we're continuing to explore new possibilities. And the caring community, when I asked one person that we have uh, been speaking with about the strengths of St. David's, her response was, it's a loving and spirit-filled place with great potential. I see it as a focal center in the area. The neighborhood is yet to recognize our potential as a resource. So let's find out new ways to share that love with our neighbors. Nancy. 
Thank you, Jean. Thank you, David. And thank you, St. David's, for this opportunity to work with the task force and with Pastor Jocelyn on these exciting and, and interesting and fun um, topics. There's three areas that we've tried to focus on in our conversations. Those include, as David mentioned, reimagining ministry. And as Jean reviewed in, in eloquent detail, the many gifts of St. David's. And then we look at St. David's as um, what does it mean to have mission in a community and, in, and how do we have relational mission in community? How many of the people who live around St. David's know what St. David's is or, or what it does? Question open. But in the traditional sense, St. David's as a parish has concerns for um, a, a very broad area of, of land in which many people live of many different sorts and conditions. And, and if we take a look at that traditional view of, of the parish, then Pastor Jocelyn's uh, flock is far larger than the community that sits in St. David's or comes to worship on Zoom on Sunday or, or um, on Facebook and then meets afterwards for Zoom. So in, in that context, I think St. David's is really fortunate to be like the heart of the community. I, I, I can't think of very many churches that are nestled right in across the street all around between neighbors and families of all ages and generations and schools and businesses right down the street. Uh, what a gift that is to the community and to the people at St. David's. And it's a bustling little place within the community. I'm not sure people around the community really know what actually goes on there and, and how what doors open for them, what opportunities are there for members of the community. And as David mentioned, um, that the community is poised for growth. I remember a couple of years ago when we had a, um, a preschool event and talking to parents, some of whom lived downtown and, and as their families grew, uh, they moved to, to um, uh, Claremont and Bay Park because it was close still to downtown, yet they had space for their growing families. And, and if we look at the, the data that's available on uh, our communities, we will see that there's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of six to 10% growth in young children. I know that doesn't sound big, but it is really big <laughs> when there are other lots of other communities where there's a negative growth in families and young children. So uh, St. David's is poised for growth. And, and, and that leads me to um, remembering in our gospel today that Jesus went around one by one and recruited his, um, his disciples into apostles. One by one. And it seems like a short period of time in in his ministry. However, it's a long-term commitment to, to grow a community um, in, a, in a church. So we wanna be patient and we wanna be hopeful and, and ride on aspirations and imagination to get us there. And, and always remembering that God is always up to something new. What is God calling St. David to do new in its community? Thank you. So uh, I'll invite uh, Pastor Jocelyn to assemble the uh, breakout groups. Uh, how would you like, uh, I'll, I'll just talk for a minute here. So our questions from the task force is to ask each of our members and, and to help to structure this a little bit, but without too much structure, we want it to be open to your ideas. Uh, what are three dreams that you have for St. David's future and mission? And then what are the ways that you imagine your dreams coming true? So what is it that we would have to do to get to that dream that you have? Uh, and we'd like to listen and record. Uh, Pastor Jocelyn will uh, assign you to a group and uh, your group leader will um, record and report back to the task force the ideas that come up and and we'll assemble those go ahead pastor jocelyn great if there's someone who is a fast typer and can type these questions in the chat 
that would be fabulous so that when you go to your breakout rooms that you will have them in your chat box. Um, I'd really be grateful for that. Um, everyone is organized. There is a vestry member in each room. There's eight rooms. Um, so one room will have two vestry members, but if each vestry member can please take notes on the conversation, on the answers that are shared and the thoughts that are shared um, so that we can share those back with the task force, um, that would be fabulous. And um, let's do 10 minutes. So I'll close the rooms at, um, at 12.45 and um, we'll come back and have our closing prayer and adjournment. So, um, oops, that's the chat box, okay. Um, so here comes the rooms and it's, uh, it's random other than that there's a best remember in every room. So here you go. Go ahead and join your room and we'll bring you back in about 10 minutes. Um, to hear what you shared with one another. I'm going to share my screen one more time. Um, David, did you want to wrap, wrap this? Sure. Um, you know, what, what we need to happen is we need to have the person in each group who recorded the, the ideas and the, and the ways, you know, the dreams and the ways to get there to, to email those to one of the task force members or to Pastor Jocelyn. Uh, we, we will compile those. The task force will compile those. Uh, if you have other ideas you didn't get to talk about, again, please email them to the task force. Uh, we have held uh, you know, some interviews with some of the staff of St. David's and the senior warden and the music director and so on. We're continuing that process. So you may get a call asking if we can interview you uh, individually or, or in a small group. And uh, our assignment is to report back to the vestry uh, in the in the time frame of May March first. So um, so that's what we think is going to happen. So thank you everyone for participating. And we will we see all the ideas, David. Yes. The yeah, vestry will see all the ideas. The vestry but, will see all the ideas, won't. and the yeah. vestry will decide oh, yeah. what they want to do going forward. Yeah, there will be a report that I'm sure can be, you know, will be shared with the vestry first, but the congregation as well. And it, it very well could be that the task force work will continue beyond that March 1st date, because um, it's quite, it's quite a large task they've been given. Um, and so, you know, we'll kind of keep that as an open question um, for what, what turns out to be best for the community. So. All right, my friends, we have reached the end. Um, thank you all for sticking with us. Um, can I have a motion to adjourn and then I'll pray. And then um, I, we do need the vestry, our 2021 vestry to just please stay on for a few minutes, but then everyone can go. Is there a motion to adjourn? So I'm I, a motion to adjourn. Excellent, second? Second. <laughs> Okay, we'll just let everyone shout aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Let us pray. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Uh, Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Be to God. Bye. I'll talk to you all later. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Except for the best for you. Get Thank to stay. you all. Best for you stay. <laughs>